wasn't even on. You're lucky the audio is not on for I'm fucking dark. Mm, back at it again. We are going after once again one of the most, if not the most well known writer in the world, William Shakespeare. God damn, I do this so often. I really should have my own William Shakespeare theme song. I'm actually very disappointed in myself for not working on that. That is this is an apology from me to you. friends, my name is Brianna Sukiyama Bond, otherwise known as Noorne Scholar, and today we're talking about, well, re-talking about The Merchant of Venice. Now, if you have not read this play, or even if you had, let me, like, clarify and, like, just break it down, break some stuff down for you really quick, because there's a lot of, there's so much going on in this play, and there's some subplots, and so many storylines, and we're just, there's a lot but we're only going to be talking about one today, and that is the B story with Shylock the Jew. This storyline is about a Jewish man named Shylock who has loaned the merchant Antonio money under the condition that should he not be able to pay it back, he has to give Shylock a pound of his flesh. And frankly, I don't understand why everyone's acting like that's such a big deal. I once loaned someone a pen, and when they didn't give it back, I just took their arm. It's, it's a balance. It's a great balance we have. Well, lo and behold, oh, Tony ain't able to pay up his debt, so Charlotte comes around asking for his fleshy prize. The issue ends up making its way up to a courthouse, where Shylock then loses his case and is forced to convert to Christianity. Now, I know that that sounds like a lot that just happened there. <laughs> But what is there to theorize about? Well, let me tell you. Well, there is a question that has arisen of the situation that I was first brought to my attention when we read this book for class in, I think, my senior year of high school. And we had the discussion. And then when I wrote this piece just after I graduated, when I was, was a freshman in college, and was doing research on it and found this to be a pretty prominent question with the play, people are confused as to whether or not this is actually intended to be anti-Semitic. Now, there's definitely good reason to ask questions about this, but I'm firm in my stance that it 100% is. And no, I'm not taking kind of the easy way out and just saying just because most of the text regarding Shylock is anti-Semitic. That's not the full reason why I think the piece overall is. I think you can have characters that are being prejudiced and have the overall moral not be prejudiced, but let's also keep in mind that most of the text regarding Shylock is anti-Semitic. The main reason people question the whole situation is this speech that Shylock has at the beginning of the play. It goes like this. Hath not you eyes, hath not you hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions, fed with the same food, hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a Christian is? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? Well, that sounds very heartfelt, and I don't mean any sarcasm there. It sounds like a genuine call to acknowledge the treatment that Jewish people and the Jewish communities have gone through over the years. But there are a few holes I want to poke in the it's not anti-Semitic theory really quick. You see, that passage is so out of place in the context of the overall play and that context should not be ignored. Throughout the entire thing, Shylock is humiliated, he is put down, he is villainized, and in the end he loses this court case and is forced to convert? Don't even, don't even get me started on the trial scene, which is treated like a massive joke. Don't believe me. This scene is intended to be a legal battle, for Shylock against two women. At the time, that idea would have been just so laughably ridiculous. A man being beaten in court by two women? How embarrassing, how ultimately embarrassing. And if that wasn't enough of a literal shot to the balls, they were two women dressed up as men. And don't forget, in Shakespeare's time, men played the roles of female characters. So the audience is watching two men dressed up as women, dressed up as men, 
winning a court case. If that doesn't sound like a fucking joke to you, please let me know of the burial site of your sense of humor. I would like to pay my respects. And after all of that, after all of that utter humiliation, Shakespeare decides that that's not even the final nail in the coffin because the play doesn't even end there. The play ends with a rom-com style skit with the other main characters completely dismissing any importance or value to the Shylock storyline. And I know some people want to say, oh, what if he was just trying to make a more subtle point? Right, William Shakespeare, king of subtlety. I remember that one time he like really casually gave that dick of a character in A Midsummer Night's Dream the literal head of an ass. Subtle. Besides, who, who says these thoughts and these techniques that we are being exposed to had to originate with Old Willie? A very common technique in argumentative, especially political talks, is to show the exact point that your opponent makes just dismiss it. You can show the other people on your side the same points that they are constantly being hit with, then give your own response that just kind of brushes it off. Then you can present your own side with an increased amount of like vigor and passion that really asserts yourself without ever actually addressing what the other people said. I mean, literally, tell me what other point there is to having a character have such an impactful and humanizing speech, but then exclusively depict him throughout the rest of the play as being bloodthirsty and vicious and absolutely dismissive of the idea of seeking a more humane option to settle their debt. It's really like Shakespeare is going, oh, they say Jews are human, Jews are just like this, they can be hurt just the same. Is this human to you? Is this the type of humanity you want us to regard as equal to everyone else? The greedy, the bloodthirsty, the penny pinching, playing to a lot of these stereotypes and a lot of these like very negative caricatures that have been drawn with the Shylock character and highlighting those and comparing them to the claims of how human Jewish people are. I get why people want to say that this is kind of like a nudge in the direction of going away from anti-Jewish prejudices, but that one passage is part of a whole much bigger story. Shakespeare sets Shylock up to be a monster and then makes him lose in every possible way. This is not intended to help pull the Jewish community from the trenches. It's there to kick more dirt on their heads. Thank you guys so much for watching another re-record of one of my Shakespeare videos. These are probably some of my favorite videos, so I definitely wanted to make sure they were the top quality for you guys. If you liked what you saw, subscribe, like. Also, go check out some of my other videos. I'm sure there are plenty that you'll like. Don't forget to check out my vlog channel over there. You know, we hang out, we have fun, you see my cats a lot more, and I also do tend to give updates and do update streams to kind of tell you my quote unquote business plan for however, whatever period of time, just to keep you guys in the know of everything that I'm doing. Other ways you can support me, I write books. The Queen of Thieves series. Keep an eye out for book number three, but these are currently available on Amazon.com for you to purchase and enjoy. Very proud of the series, very much in love with where it's going. Can't wait for you to fall in love with it too. And if you want even more about this series and for my YouTube channel, go check out my Patreon over there. You can subscribe for as little as $2 a month, but when you hit the $5 a month tier, you get some really nice things. You get all of my videos early. You get the notes that I do for my book streams. Uh, link will be up there. Link, You get the notes that I take from my books when I do those book streams. And with the books that I write, you will be able to be a part of the pre-release premieres in which I will be doing episodic releases of all of the books before they're available for anyone else while also you know giving you some behind the scenes throughout that entire premiere. If any of that sounds awesome to you, please go check out all the links. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Valedictions friends.